Melissa Gallo here. I'd like to welcome you to this tutorial entitled Imitating Cezanne, in which I attempt to paint Cezanne's still life with curtain and flowered pitcher. I'll be using an image of his painting plus the brush pack I created called 1895 Post Impressionism. So let's get started. Welcome everyone to the first video in this tutorial. It is meant to introduce you to your tools, namely the brushes. Let's begin by creating a new document. Go up to File, New, and choose a width and height in inches, not very large, and a resolution of 250 pixels per inch. Choose a light beige or perhaps a white color and a paper. I prefer to work on paper that has some grain and this is the simulated wood grain. Press OK and now we have our document. You can drag out the handles to give you a little bit of margin around the document and let's begin experimenting with our brushes. I'd like to give you a word of caution. Please do not paint with a mouse. Get yourself a graphics tablet and pen because these brushes are designed to be very pressure sensitive. With that said, we're going to go up to Corel Painter and down to Preferences and over to Brush Tracking. And this literally tracks the pressure of your hand on the brush. So just give it a little sketch there. And as you can see, it changes as I press down and when I press very lightly. So do something, make a stroke that's comfortable and press OK. And you can do that actually for each brush every time you switch brushes so that it responds to your hand. It's also important to use a graphics tablet and pen because you want the brushes to pick up the texture of the paper that you will be using. So let's begin our test. We open up our brush pack here and we're going to start with charcoal draw. And what I like to do is just take the rectangular selection tool and drag out a little rectangle. Press B to return to brush and I'm going to choose black over here. And I'm just going to press very lightly and then press down hard and you can see the effect that I'm getting. Now it's picking up the paper texture. If you want more grain, and push this slider up like this and let's do another little thing here. And you see now it's getting more grain. And this will be true for all of the brushes. Hit Command or Control to deselect. And now we have a little sample here of what can happen with just one brush. Now I also want to go over with you how to enlarge or decrease your brush size. So if you press down on the Mac, Command and Alt, and I'm on a Mac right now, I can push that brush while keeping my pen down on my tablet and literally change change the brush size on the go. Alternatively I can change that up here but it's much faster to do it with the Alt and Command keys pressed down. So on the PC you would click on the Alt and Control keys to do the same thing. Before we make our samples I want to go over one more point. Remember that I said that these brushes interact with the paper? Well, this is our brush and you can hit reset tool to reset it to its original setting. And this is our brush with this paper here, simulated wood grain. What if we chose window frost, which is one of my favorite papers, and we enlarged it and you can see a little bit beginning there. Well, what if we, in, now remember this is only 
when we reset it, this is only at 10% showing grain. What if we pushed it all the way up? Now we can really see it. Okay. And we can play further with this by going up to Window, Paper Panels, and opening up the paper panel itself. And look at this. Okay, you can increase the size of the grain. So now we <laughs> the grain is like this. You can change the direction of the grain. You can decrease the contrast. This is contrast, this is light or dark. And it really doesn't show much grain now. If you punch up the contrast, now you get a lot of grain. Let's make the grain really tiny and we get this instead. So as you can see, these brushes, most if not all, really interact with the grain. You can choose any paper that you like and experiment. So let's clear our canvas easily by hitting Command or Control A and then hitting, and you see we get these marching ants, and then hitting the Delete or Backspace button and everything's cleared. So let's begin and we're going we're gonna to go back to our wood grain texture here. Let's begin with Charcoal Draw and draw out a little sample. Press B to go back to Brush and make sure it's back on its original settings and we're just going to draw this out like this. Okay, Command or Control D to deselect and let's do another one. And this time we're going to do rough sketch. And this is a little different here. Now this really picks up the paper grain, as you can see. Again, you can always change the paper and everything about the paper for any of these brushes. Again, let's select another little rectangle there. B for brush. And we're going to do the block in. This also will pick up texture. And again, you can change the size of any of these brushes by doing Command or Control Alt and just pulling your brush. Control D to deselect. Let's do another one. B again for brush and we're going to textured block in this time and this brush really picks up texture so you can really have fun with this guy. Now let me show you something if you're painting within a selected area guess what you can't paint outside the area until you deselect this. Now I can paint outside. Again I can really increase the size of any of these brushes. If I press down lightly I get this if I press down with more pressure, I get more of a solid brush. Command or Control Z to undo your brush strokes. Now, let's go do another one. B for brush, and we're going to do soft fill. And I'm going to enlarge this a little bit. Command D. Okay. And so let's go to soft shading. This also will pick up texture and get a little darker as you press down. See why you have to have a pressure sensitive tablet and graphics pen. Let's do another one. And we'll go to Soft Shading 2. Slightly different. Command or Control D to deselect. P 
pebble texture. This also will pick up the grain very nicely of the paper. And textured edge. Now with all of these, I'm pressing lightly and then pressing with pressure and experimenting. Command D. Now we come to brush number 10, which is color variations. And for this, you will need to select an actual color because there's gonna be a slight variation in the color of your brush stroke depending upon the direction. So I start out like this. And then, see it's more purple, here's a little turquoise. Like that. And I designed this brush to do just that so that you can add a little variety um, to, your, to your shapes in your painting depending upon the direction of your brush stroke, if you want. Let's stay with this nice blue as we sample the rest of our brushes. So we will do color variations. And let's see, there's a little purple, a little turquoise, there we go. And let's do the next one. Now, this is a selection, that's why I'm always saying press the letter B for brush to return to your brushes, otherwise nothing will happen. Let's go to Luscious Oil. And this really is a very nice oil brush. And then this one, Smeary Oil. And again, you can experiment with these papers. Pasta oil. Let's make that a little larger. And soft impasto. There's a slight variation on this brush. And finally, we have smeary large oil. And this is already very large as a brush, you can see. Finally, I would encourage you to play. Play with those brushes and papers. That is how you will learn to paint digitally. Discover what the brushes can do, and you'll be able to use them very effectively in all of your paintings. Mm -hmm.